Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Oval Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Aria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? Hey, Kyle. It is going uh, pretty well. Uh, I've been a little under the weather for the last couple of days. Uh, five days, actually. It's been a long five days. You heard all about it. I won't share too much. But, uh, I mean, I, honestly, it could be stress, you know, with the, the new house, the, like, all the, the work that's been going into that. Like, I'm just, I'm exhausted, you know. But you uh, otherwise, vacation. yeah, no, I do. I do. I think the, uh, the next vacation is going to be uh, Europe and I will see you there. Yes, absolutely. We just bought a um, hotel uh, reservation. I haven't got plane tickets yet, but we're, uh, we're ready to go. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited as well. And it was way less expensive than I had thought, which is always a pleasant surprise. No doubt. There's no doubt about that. All right, well, today we have Nathan Ingram here. He is a, a coach, a speaker, a trainer, an author, an agency owner. He's, he's everything WordPress. <laughs> uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, but Nathan, I'm really glad to have you here today on the show. How's it going today? I am doing great, guys. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. You have a such a perfect radio voice. I love it. Every time I listen to you, <laughs> I feel like I'm listening to like good radio. Oh, no, it's, it's all the microphone. Well, it, it works out well. So why don't you tell us, uh, <laughs> tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what what it is that you do? Oh, goodness. Well, uh, I think most people tend to know me as the host at iThemes Training. Uh, we do WordPress education, two or three live webinars a week. Uh, most of it's free, which I love. Uh, they might have seen me on uh, at some WordCamp on some stage talking about something related to business and some big mistakes that I've made along the way. But I actually, I built and sold my first website in 1995. So I've been at uh, the web game for a long time. Um, I won't tell I, you what uh, grade I was in that year. Oh, complete listen. <laughs> don't. Was, it was elementary school though, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> see, see I, I, my daughters call me a boomer all the time now. And I had to look up and, you know, because that's a thing now with them. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, come on. Right. I, but whatever, I guess so. Man, what, but, yeah. uh, what did you build that first website with? Uh, yeah, so text editor. Uh, okay. there, there was a beautiful piece of software back then called Hot Dog, and it was like the best thing because it used to be like Windows Notepad was, you know, or whatever they called it back then. That was what you, you know, that's all you had. Mm -hmm. But Hot Dog was this wonderful, H, had some HTML snippets in it from Sausage Software, which was uh, an Australian <laughs> company. You can look it up. It's got a Wikipedia page, but it was the bomb, man. That was the greatest thing ever. Nice. That's nuts. But... Uh, yeah, I, I started, I got official in 2002 and incorporated my business. I was just kind of fooling around with it uh, between 95 and 02. But uh, yeah, started uh, doing it seriously in 2002, moved to WordPress in 2009. Uh, it was all WordPress by 2010. So this is my 10th year working with WordPress. Um, and about, uh, I guess, five years ago, uh, almost six now, I started doing growth coaching for WordPress business owners. Uh, I'm a I'm a teacher by nature. I'm going to be teaching something till the day I die. And so I love helping people who run WordPress businesses blow up the obstacles that get in the way and realize that they're not the only ones who have these problems. I've had thousands of coaching conversations with people at this point. And uh, over, over that time, I tell you, there are very few unique problems. Yeah. And sometimes you feel like you're kind of just on an island, you know, you feel, you feel a little bit alone or maybe this is only happening to me, but, but that's just not the case. I mean, it's, it's happening to a, a great deal of us. Yeah. It think really about how is. many times, uh, one of our, our group members posts something in, in, uh, looking for an answer and they start out with, this might sound dumb, but, and <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it may be a simple, uh, a simple thing to somebody else that's already gone through it. But the fact is that somebody's probably already gone through it. So, you know, posting those, those little like, Hey, I just need a hand. Please do don't feel bad about it. Like never. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And that's, you know, a lot of us, it looks like you guys work from home a lot as well. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. When you're working from home and you're like the only person around here, it's easy to get in a tunnel and think that you're the only one with those problems. And you're totally not. The details may be a little different, but I guarantee you every problem that you have as a WordPress business owner, somebody else has had or is currently having. And the cool thing about a group like, like you guys have is 
uh, it kind of serves two purposes. One, obviously, people can reach out and find community and get answers and help. But the other side is when you help other people, you may be, you know, in WordPress for six months or, you know, you're the first year of running your business and you got this major imposter syndrome of, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm you know, pulling the wool over everybody's eyes. But when you get to answer somebody else's question, because you know, hey, I've actually figured that part out. It's such a confidence booster. No, that's it really what community is all about. Yeah, I remember when I first first started doing this, the first community I landed in was Adam Prizer's community. Uh, and I was blowing up the the messages with like really <laughs> dumb questions, right? And so people were just so kind to like respond and help me and all this. And I'm like, okay, when I figure all this out, I want to make sure to give back to that, you know? That's it's awesome. Such a cool thing. Now I will say here, uh, I, I actually met Nathan and I, I wanted to give a little bit of backstory. Just to tell everybody Nathan's a, a solid dude here. Uh, I <laughs> I was speaking at, going to speak at WordCamp in DFW last year and uh, imposter syndrome and all that. And I started Googling uh, WordCamp speakers and I came across Nathan's videos and they were awesome. And they were the best WordCamp talks I had ever seen. Uh, and I went down a rabbit hole of, of doing <laughs> a bunch of them and uh, Beth Livingston put me in contact with Nathan, which was super nice. Uh, and Nathan actually ended up coming to WordCamp DFW. Yeah. Uh, and I was... Uh, sweating it and getting a little worried and running uh downstairs to go to the bathroom before my talk started and ran into nathan uh in the hallway and he's he's the the most nice genuine person you're ever going to meet uh very very kind person and i appreciate you uh you being kind to me and and showing up for the talk and stuff and, and i'm glad to have you in our group oh man i appreciate it awesome well let's get into this so uh uh, one thing I found from you was this book. We'll see if we can get it to focus in here. I got lots of lights <laughs> going on. So uh, this book, Dealing with Problem Clients, uh, which is a book you wrote, and it is fantastic. It's a quick little read. You can see it's it's not super thick for people like me who don't, don't spend <laughs> a ton of time reading. Uh, but I think I went through this in a weekend. Uh, what's great about it is it's kind of broken up into two halves here. The first half is telling some, I, I'm assuming they're they're non-fictional stories with uh, the names changed to protect the the guilty in here uh, <laughs> but they're they're dealing with specific types of problem clients uh and and kind of giving those people those types of clients a name and and how you deal with them and the second half of the book is a lot of really practical advice and that's kind of what we're going to talk about here today right. is uh one thing inside this book that has helped my agency tremendously and it's super simple and easy to do uh, and it's really helped out. So it's called the Friday email strategy. And there's there's about two or three pages in here. It's not a whole lot about it. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Friday email strategy is? Yeah, sure. So first of all, a big disclaimer, I did not come up with this. Uh, I am a sponge for information, both Amen useful and useless, mm -hmm. right? So, and I cannot remember for the life of me where I heard this. And so the minute I figure out who I heard this brilliant idea from, I will attribute it completely. So if anybody knows where this came from, please let me know. But uh, so the Friday email strategy is super simple. And that's that's a key because there's lots of different business strategies out there and lots of them are very complex. And what I've found in my world and in, you know, coaching people for a long, you know, a lot of years is if it's not simple, it doesn't stick. So this is something simple that anybody can do. And if you just do this one thing, it's going to up your client communication and up your client satisfaction game tremendously. And it's, it basically works like this. On, for me, Fridays, when you're closing out the week, on Fridays, um, I send an email to every client with an active project, whether it's a build or some anything we're doing that's an active project. And it's a simple three-part email that focuses on past, present, future. And essentially, you say... Uh, the, well, the past is, this is what we've done on your project this week. The present is, this is where your project is in terms of completion as of today. The future is, this is what we're working on next week. And if you have any questions or issues, just reach out and let us know. Have a great weekend. Uh, and that email is so helpful. It does a couple of things. First, it keeps the client in the loop of where you are in terms of project completion. And clients love that. Virtually every freelance web developer struggles with communication most people who are technical detail oriented people the kind of people building websites are usually typically not great at communication that's just part of the brain wiring right and so we have to be um we have to be intentional about it 
And so this, this helps us to up that game and it really helps the client be happy with what's going on. But the second thing, and we were kind of talking about this in a pre-show conversation, is that when you send this email, it like offloads all this stress off of you and you get to like enjoy your weekend. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And what you said about it being simple and, and that that's the beauty of this is I'll sit down. I, I usually only have, you know, maybe between four and eight active projects. If we're not, I'm not sending these out to my care plan customers, uh, but you know, I'll have between four and eight projects going on. Sitting down and writing these emails takes me about 10 or 15 minutes on a Friday. Um, and oh. I've just set an appointment in my calendar to remind me to do it. Now I've kind of gotten in the habit of it. I wake up kind of anxious to get this email out the door. Uh, but it being simple is exactly why it's so effective. It's very easy. Anybody can do this. And it just adds that extra layer of transparency to you know your business with your client. Because, I mean, in my experience, most people that aren't in our field don't really know what it takes to build a site. So if you don't, catch them up and keep them in the loop, they're wondering, well, you know, it's been however long, like, I don't know how long a website's supposed to take, like, where are they? Did they just take my money? Like, it solves all of that as well. Uh, it totally does. And so I don't know about you, but occasionally I hit problems when I'm building a website. I'm probably the only one, right? But right. <laughs> uh, the, the, the problem is when we hit an issue and we, you know, we're stuck and we can't figure something out, usually the last thing we want to do is communicate with the client. Uh, yeah. And maybe the client, uh, you know, we even maybe dodge phone calls or emails from the client because we don't want to tell them we're having trouble with something and there might be a delay. And that's exactly the opposite of what we ought to be doing. Uh, not necessarily oversharing, but if we're at the end of the week and we've gotten hung up on some detail of a project and it's put us back a week in time or a few days time, you communicate that to the client. A good clients are going to totally understand that. And they're going to appreciate the fact that you're being transparent. Say, so look, you know, a Friday email when there's a problem might look something like this. Dear Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, uh, we're in the process of getting your uh, website connected to FedEx shipping. And um, we hit a problem with that. It, it took a, a little extra time this week. We're, we're going to be working on that next week. It might delay the launch of your project a few days, but we'll do our best to keep you in the loop and kind of like an airline pilot, we'll try to make it up, you know, on the back end of the flight or whatever. But uh, just keeping them in the loop of those, of those things is so important. Communicating, you know, struggles early and throughout the project is just good practice. Yeah. And how are you going to be mad at somebody if they, let's say there is a delay like that. And in the book, you give an example of both, uh, you know, a good week and a bad week or explaining a problem, right? Um, they're not going to be mad at you if you run into a problem and communicate that problem with you. Very rarely are people upset that something didn't go right. They're upset when something didn't go right and you hit it or you tried yes. to lie about it or mm -hmm. something like that. That's when you run into problems. Most people are pretty understanding that things don't always go exactly as planned every time, right? Good clients are, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you can, <laughs> you can reveal the bad clients when you communicate you know, information like that. But uh, it, it's, just, it's so helpful to get that off of your chest because I don't know how many weekends that I've virtually lost because I am worried about the problem and half of my worry is, oh my gosh, what am I going to tell the client? And when you offload that from yourself, it lets you enjoy the weekend. How about that? Yeah. yeah. And in most cases, they'll get back to you and they'll say, okay, thanks for letting me know. And it's as That's simple as that. And you can just shed all of that, uh, that stress right then and there. Exactly. Yeah, I've noticed a, a very noticeable change in my behavior. Like I, I get up on the weekends early still, and I'll usually work on some of my own projects or whatever. But <clears throat> since I started doing these emails, I really don't think about client work hardly ever on the weekends now, because there's something just in my brain that's triggered about kind of closing out that chapter for the week and saying, all of this is done now. We're finished with this now. And next, next week, we're going to start these other things. So now I have this break in between and it. I mean, it's really changed kind of my mentality during the weekends, which is super thankful. I'm sure my family appreciates that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that's so awesome to hear. And because it does the same thing for me. And, you know, one of the keys that uh, to be happy in freelance life, you've got to have great boundaries. Uh, I call them fences, right, in the, in the book. 
but you've got to have great boundaries. And this email is one of the things that lets you set client work on a shelf, know that it's there, know that it's okay. I'll be back to it Monday, but now I get to do my thing for the weekend. Enjoy my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll say, uh, I, I have a couple examples of how this has worked out really nicely for me and I'll, I'll uh, keep names out of it because a couple of these people are actually people in the group that I do work with. So one of them uh, I do I do work with, I shared this Friday email thing with them. They started doing it with their customers as well. I do white label work for them. So it's kind of funny. We'll both send each other a Friday email uh, on Friday, <laughs> kind of going over the same projects, which is That's kind of just fun. Uh, but it does make sure we're on the same page with everything. And it's, it's helped like there was a delay in a project and it was my customer's customer that was kind of delaying things. Uh, and we were able to just stay in the loop. Oh, okay, you know, I'm just still waiting. And I just told my customer, you know, just let me know when you're ready and I'll jump back in. But for now, I'm in a holding pattern. And that's totally cool because now I can kind of plan things around that. The other one was actually it, it kind of saved my butt from a problem is I was doing work. This is when I first started implementing this Friday email. I was doing work for a customer and on Thursday, I gave them an assignment to fill out some stuff for me, some some information that I needed. And so Friday rolled around and I thought, well, I don't know how this works. I just talked with them on Thursday and told them everything we need. Uh, so I'm not going to send them a Friday email. So I skipped it. Um, and then the next Friday rolled around and I hadn't heard from them at all. I went and checked the, the Google Doc. It wasn't filled out. So I shot them the Friday email and said, hey, didn't hear from you this week. I know, you know, we're still waiting on blah, blah, blah. And I got an email from them saying that that last Thursday, they never received the assignment I sent over. So uh, who knows how long that might have gone on with me just thinking they're dragging their feet and them thinking that I hadn't done anything for them. So uh, I'm a little bit more careful now to send the Friday email out, even if I just talked to them on Thursday. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, one of my stories using the Friday email almost mirrors that perfectly. Like one of those, something was lost in the uh, in the loop, and I, who knows how long it would have taken. Like, right? Yeah, and then I would have I would have kind of been the bad guy two weeks later saying, "Hey, just wanted to touch base," which I hate saying. I hate saying touch base, but. <clears throat> Like, what else do you say? And they, you know, it, it's just that lack of communication that it's, it's kind of like a, it breaks a bit of that trust signal with your clients when something like that happens. Yeah, I agree 100%. So I do want to encourage everybody. I have a, a link uh, wherever this video is being watched. There'll be a link somewhere near with uh, with a link to Nathan's book on Amazon. Uh, it's like $10. It's a quick read, but it is super worth it. You will pick up uh, uh, lots of tricks and lots of things on how to better deal with with problem clients because we all we all have them right and we we like to come in the admin bar and bitch about these clients and say oh god I can't believe what a jerk this person is but we all know and I have little angel Matt Davies sitting on my shoulder a lot who always calms <laughs> me down from these things but we know that dealing with these clients by lashing out or calling them names or you know refusing to you know that's not really the best way to handle these things and what this what this book really does is kind of give you a way to recognize these types of clients and put some procedures and things in place to help you more effectively communicate and deal with these people. So uh, it's, it's a really handy book and I definitely think uh, everybody should own a copy on and uh, keep it real handy. I keep mine right there and pull it out. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, uh, I, we'll probably keep this episode pretty short. Uh, I think that the, the Friday email is super useful to people and I would love to hear, uh, hear stories of other people that have implemented it or if you want to try it out, let us know how it goes for you. But Nathan, uh, in our pre-show, you were telling us a little bit about something you have coming up here soon, uh, soon-ish. We'll see. We're going to try to coordinate that with the, <laughs> the launch of this podcast. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can do that. But why don't you tell us about what you got going on? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, so one of the little projects that I, 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 every year in the first quarter of the year, I try to do some sort of project for, for my business. And last year, it was actually writing that book that you're holding um, and got that out in uh, February of last year, uh, 2019. And uh, this year, it's taking that, the concept of the friendly monsters from the book and the, the talks that I've given on it and actually rolling it into what I think is going to be a very useful tool for people who work with clients with WordPress. One of the big, um, one of the big missing pieces for most of the people that I've had a coaching relationship with is a solid contract. 
uh, that really legitimately works for client work. I mean, you can go on the web and there's sample contracts out there and usually they, they hit two, one of two extremes. One is it's, you know, it's got some client work type language, but it's full of holes or it's like totally legalese and it's not pertinent. I mean, you don't even understand what the heck it says, right? I so, can't stand those contracts. Ah, it drives yeah. me nuts. You, you, you yes. kind of need to know what your contract's about. <laughs> it's a, right. So um, years ago, I mean, I, I started working on this contract 20 years ago. And the, the contract that I have that I use today with client work has sort of evolved through that uh, over that time frame. It's been reviewed by lots of different attorneys. Um, it covers every problem situation that I've had in 20 years of working with clients. And that contract, I've given it to coaching clients, I've had made it part of a course, and I've updated it significantly, and I've now called it Monster Contracts. It's plural, Monster Contracts, because there's the project contract, and also a care plan type contract as well, if, as you're working with uh, clients doing care plans, which I know you guys love and promote, and I think that's a key to the freelance oh, success. Yeah. Um, but so it, basically it's, it's my contract that I've used and it's out there. It's, uh, it's purchasable. And, uh, then there's a, a, an annual, uh, renewal that's involved in that because it's really, a, it's, it's, I'm positioning it to be a cloud sourced contract. Meaning Kyle, if you've got a, a statement in your contract that is fantastic, you can submit it. And if it's added to the monster contract, then you get the renewal free. Uh, if you have your local attorney review it and they have state specific language, you can submit that and your renewal will be free. The idea is you'll be able to log in and have the latest updates from people across the country who are using the contract in their work and we just get better and better together and have a solid contract that keeps us all safe when we're dealing with these friendly monsters. Man, and that's such an amazing way of going about it too. I, I can't count the amount of times that I've, uh, I've rewritten or added to my contract just you know, something happens and I say to myself, well, I don't want that to happen again. So new language gets added and it's just an ever growing beast. So yeah, I think that uh, crowdsourcing that is, is a phenomenal idea. Yeah, I was telling Nathan before, I think my contract's starting to look like a ransom note uh, because I've <laughs> added so many things and bits and pieces. Like like you said, every time something goes wrong, I'm like, okay, well, uh, new clause in the contract for that, uh, which is great because I'm starting to cover, you know, a lot more bases. And, and you know, my, my agency's, what, like three and a half years old, so I've ran into a lot of problems. I haven't ran into 20 years of problems, I'm sure. So I, I'm assuming Nathan's contract's going to cover uh, things I haven't even ran up against yet. And I actually want to say I do appreciate there being a renewal fee in the fact that we know this is going to be updated and maintained and all that, which I think is absolutely the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. If for no other reason, we're going to have it annually audited by an attorney uh, to make sure everything is, you know, an attorney who's familiar with tech and internet and those sorts of things, just to make sure we're up to date with all the latest things every year. Plus, you know, all of the, the, the cloud sourced submissions and updates to the contract. I, I think it's going to be a really strong tool for people in their businesses. And what about, I know we have, you know, people from all over the world, literally, which still blows my mind in this group. Uh, but what about other languages and stuff? Have you considered it being translated? So that, is, yes, I've considered it. And I'm, I'm stuck on that, uh, yeah. to be honest. That's one of the places where I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the contract out in English, obviously, first. Uh, the legal part, there are obviously required legal boilerplate language that's in the contract. That just needs to be there. Um, otherwise, if, if you have to go to court, then you have to go through a whole, a lot more to define the language and get it into that legalese. It's just, it's a nightmare. So some of that legalese will vary from state to state within the United States. Some of it will change for Canada. When you get into other countries, it just depends on what the rule of law looks like there. And so mm -hmm. that can be incredibly complicated. However, Taking the very practical thing, just for example, here's a great clause that most people don't have in their contract, uh, email deliverability. What happens if the client reaches out to you and says, I had 15 orders from my website and they never came to my inbox. Now I'm suing you for a million dollars for lost potential sales or this contact form reply from this million dollar client. I never got it and it's your fault. And, you know, so what are you going to do about that? Well, I mean, there's some strategies we can put in place from the tech side, but do you have language in your contract that deals with that issue? Uh, those are sor those sorts of very practical, 
um, pieces of the contract that could be translated into other languages by somebody. Uh, and right. so I'm definitely open to that idea. I, I'm just not there yet. Yeah, no, I understand. When we, when we uh, launched the website owner's manual last year, uh, of course, we had no idea many people would download it, but they did. And luckily we had a lot of people actually go through and translate it into their native language and send it back to us. And we were able to, you know, offer that on the site if you want to download it. But I think it's a little bit different when it's a, a legal binding contract. You probably got to be yeah. a little bit more careful with that. <laughs> yeah. And Website Owner's Manual is a fantastic tool. I own it. I, I've used it. It's great. Well, thank you very much. It's always I good to hear. That. Yeah, we appreciate that. Awesome, Nathan. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, there'll be links to uh, the book, which I think you got to go pick up. Um, uh, it's it, it's a valuable resource that I use probably weekly. I pull this off my desk and read something out of it. Um, definitely check that out. We'll have links to Monster Contracts. Uh, uh, so once that's available, or if it is by the time you're hearing this, you can go and check all that out. Nathan, where else can people find you and follow you and stalk you like I do? <laughs> I am at Nathan Ingram on Twitter, uh, N-A-T-H-A-N-I-N-G-R-A-M on Twitter. You can also find me at NathanIngram.com. That's my uh, coaching and education site. Uh, also, come on iThemes Training. We have two or three live webinars a week. Uh, that's training.ithemes.com or just click the training link on iThemes.com and uh, you'll get over there. Awesome. Or just show up at a word camp. He's probably speaking. Yeah. So just show up at one. <laughs> Chances are he'll be there. Um, awesome. Well, Matt, did I miss anything that I, uh, you wanted to make sure we got to? No, I think uh, I think we covered pretty much everything. I just wanted to make a note that uh, your contracts, Kyle, would look better if you stopped cutting out the uh, the letters <laughs> from magazines. <laughs> you would think, but I, I got so many graphic design skills. I want to make it look cool, right? <laughs> I had to make the logo as big as possible. That's yes, one page dedicated did. just to that. <laughs> right. I mean, if I didn't write it in my own blood, it would be better. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Awesome, Nathan. I really, really appreciate you joining the show and being part of our community. And hopefully we'll have you on again soon. So as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channels and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. That's all for now. And we will see you all inside the group. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>